this series, I go behind the scenes to reveal what a sustainable hotel or lodge looks and feels like. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I'm here at Ravana Garden on the Golden Coast on the south of Sri Lanka. Spot the Difference is designed for both travellers, travel agents and operators to learn what it takes to be a truly authentic, sustainable hotel. We'll go together through nine key criteria from energy to waste, design, community, biodiversity. There is no stone left unturned. Before construction began, special attention was given to the native flora and fauna here. The sad reality is most hotels opt for the easy and cheaper route of first clearing the area and bringing in heavy machinery for construction. This was not the case for Ravana Garden. Rizik, the owner, wouldn't let anything stand in the way of his commitment that not one single tree would be felled during the construction of this hotel. The plans were repeatedly revised until the architect had a plan which kept every native tree standing. So the number of villages was actually reduced from 15 to 9, simply because Rizika the owner placed more value on nature than the profits. As you walk along this beach on the southern coast of Sri Lanka, it is clear that Ravana is unique. The forest and native plants remain, providing both food and shelter for the wildlife. This forest isn't just benefiting the animals. On the hotter days, the natural cooling effect and shade made it so much more pleasant for both guests and staff. What's good for nature is always good for us. Situated so close to the beach, most hotels would pride themselves in providing the perfect sea view. But with this natural corridor which wildlife used to move through, the idea of an unobstructed sea view just wasn't viable. And this led to only more magic and character in the place by simply keeping it. Another key design element was the natural ventilation of the rooms which allowed the air to flow through working with the natural sea breeze rather than simply relying on energy guzzling aircon. More than a third of all man-made greenhouse gas emissions are generated by food alone. And 70% of freshwater withdrawals go to global agriculture. So it's a really important topic to talk about when we travel. The menu at a sustainable hotel tells you more than you might think about their ethos and how committed they really are. Let's start with the biggest, most standout thing that Ravana Garden in Sri Lanka did that so other few are willing to do. They made a bold step. They removed beef, lamb and pork off the menu. Why? Because they're the worst types of meat for the environment and the most unsustainable. So you might be thinking, wouldn't a vegan hotel just be more sustainable? It's not that black and white. When fish are sourced from local fishermen right on the beach edge, just a few yards away, Supporting these local communities is also a part of being a sustainable hotel. And look, these weren't wealthy fishing companies. These were fishermen using small wooden boats and nets from the beach. In addition to this, Ravana Garden promises zero MSG and organic produce used as often as possible. This hotel clearly put plant-based dishes front and centre. It celebrated them, an important reminder of their ancestors' diets. Their menu inspired both meat eaters and veggies alike when they travelled. And I personally have never experienced plant-based cooking this tasty, inventive and inspiring. I didn't see one can of Coke or foreign bottled water during my two weeks here. Instead, we had fresh fruit smoothies each morning, zero plastic sourced directly from the local market, which did help to curb tourism leakage too. Travel is about changing our hearts and minds and food has a key, very exciting role to play. Tourism leakage happens when money spent by tourists leaves the local economy and instead benefits multinational corporations, large cruise liners or foreign countries. Simply put, money ends up leaking out and the local communities hosting the tourists see very little benefit. On average, it's reported that only 10-30% to 30 of tourism money is invested back into local economies. So helping your money reach the right pockets is all part of a sustainable trip. At Ravana Garden Hotel, it's located right on the south coast of Sri Lanka, and the beaches here are far less touristy than those on the busier west coast, so there aren't many work opportunities for local people outside of farming and fishing. Over 60% of the staff at this hotel are from the immediate towns and villages. The head chefs were two women which were trained here at Ravana, and this opportunity transformed their lives from housewives to being empowered to pursue their passion. 
The hotel also formed partnerships with local guides like Mahesh, who ran the Bird Sanctuary Tour. With tourism slowly recovering in Sri Lanka, the owner of the hotel had to get creative to sustain all the jobs of the local people here. So back to origins, a Sri Lankan spices company was born, and this provided the revenue to help keep everybody employed. I also checked out the workplace wellness policy here, which was two days off a week, high quality meals, medical insurance and great staff accommodation. An authentic, sustainable hotel will ensure those on their doorstep feel the benefits of tourism and are well looked after. Located close to a beach where turtles come and lay their eggs, Ravana Garden Hotel has zero beach-facing light. This is because artificial sources of light often attract baby turtles or hatchlings and cause them to move in the wrong direction when they're born. Rather than follow the light of the moon, the turtles follow the wrong light to a disastrous outcome. So with zero beach-facing lights, Ravana is helping to protect this endangered species. It's impossible to talk about every single species I witnessed at Ravana. There were just so many. One thing is for sure, I've never stayed in a hotel with so many wild residents. The untouched areas of forest, the wildlife corridor and native trees bearing fruits gave so many species shelter and food. And this is so often missing from hotel grounds, where the balance between people and nature is off kilter. In the first 48 hours, I saw over 20 species, from land and water monitors to monkeys, kingfishers, mongoose, Frogs, crabs, endemic birds, spotted mouse deer, the list goes on. And this only added to the guest experience. This family of Chevrotin, or mouse deer, were amazing residents. These guys are really important seed dispersers for the ecosystem. And the hotel saved this family by simply keeping the forest in place. The well-looked-after bird bath was also another great sign. It was regularly visited by a whole load of species, providing fresh water for animals it is so important, especially with climate change. With population pressure, water extraction for agriculture and poor management, fresh water is a growing global problem. In fact, a recent report suggested the demand for fresh water is expected to exceed supply by 40% by 2030. And water scarcity is a real issue in Sri Lanka. So it was a positive sign to see rainwater captured in these large tanks for irrigation. Another great way this hotel can serve water was by housing only indigenous trees, plants and vegetables, which require less water than thirsty non-natives. Reusing water is another technique. Here the system took grey water from guest showers, which was then used to rewater the garden. Any hotel without water guzzling golf course is always a positive sign as well, and there was no golf course in sight. For you. A male one of the team kindly showed me around, and I was able to see that the water used in the plunge pools for guests was then stored and then reused for the gardens. I also loved the small creative ways this hotel was conserving water. By placing a glass bottle in the toilet tank, less water was needed to fill the tank back up. Small, but clever. One of the biggest sources of waste in hotels and hospitality is food waste. And buffets are the worst offenders. It's been reported that up to 50% of food can be wasted. So naturally, we didn't see one buffet here. Food waste usually ends up in landfill, which generates methane, a potent greenhouse gas with a stronger warming effect than carbon dioxide. But by composting organic waste, food emissions can be significantly reduced. And at Ravana, any organic food waste was put into this clever biocast system. The team were really proud and passionate to show me around. The process breaks down this organic matter and turns it into methane, carbon dioxide and water vapour. The methane is then used to generate electricity and heat and organic fertiliser is a byproduct. Any leftover food at Ravana which wasn't eaten at mealtimes by guests was either eaten by the staff or given to the stray dogs on the beach. Plastic waste is the next big offender. During my stay at Ravana Garden, I did not see one piece of plastic, not one, Every single drink, snack and meal was served in reusable forms. Even when we went on day trips, whether it be a safari or a boat trip, snacks were served in leaves or reusable tubs. More than 85% of the power used by the hotel was generated by the on-site solar panels, which were located high up on the roof. Getting to them meant climbing a ladder, hence my very shaky camera footage. I kept imagining the report, woman falls to her death looking for solar panels. This clean green energy powered the hotel and the electric car. But there was another element to consider here. As you know, the Sri Lankan government is still exercising power cuts. And with these cuts, 
What happened is the solar energy Ravan had created became inaccessible. It was stored on the grid so they didn't have access, which was really frustrating. At points, they did have to start up a diesel generator, which is kind of the opposite of what you want a sustainable hotel to do, but I understood their conundrum. So they're looking into getting a battery to store their own energy as soon as possible. Sadly, tourism is one of the main contributors to animal cruelty around the world, and Sri Lanka's track record on animal welfare hasn't been rosy, especially when it comes to elephants. As a sustainable traveller in Sri Lanka, there is no better first step to take than by standing up for animal welfare and voting with your wallet by the experiences you choose to engage with. Two things to keep in mind. First, animals aren't designed for our amusement. And second is wild encounters are always best. I'd done some reading before the trip about the popular national parks in Sri Lanka and often overshadowed by the popular Yala National Park where most people go. Bundala National Park is less frequently visited, so the animals are relatively undisturbed by human presence. They're less stressed. It's a more positive experience for both animals and wildlife spotters. Online reviews referred to Shamel, a local guide, as the best and most respectful guide we could possibly liaise with and connect with in Sri Lanka. He loves elephants more than anything. He was patient and hugely knowledgeable and had a real empathy for the wildlife. We saw this young male bathing to cool down in the hot sun and we also saw a family of elephants with babies later on in the evening. It was pure magic. We were the only vehicle in sight most of the time. We also did a boat safari on Kalamatea Bird Sanctuary organised by the hotel Ravana Garden. The non-motorised boat was both relaxing and didn't create noise pollution. Mahesh, our local guide, was incredibly knowledgeable and had such a clear love and empathy for the wildlife here. When it comes to being a sustainable traveller, it's really important that we don't stay inside the four walls of a hotel or large resort, as some package holidays encourage this. This creates both physical and symbolic barriers between tourists and local communities, rather than bringing those barriers down. Sustainable travel is as much about reducing our environmental impact as it is about giving local people the chance to share their culture, history, and to have a platform to have a voice in which to connect with people they welcome to their home country. From beach cleanups to walking to Red Rock Mountain for a sunset picnic, cycling around the farmer's paddy fields, and even a traditional outdoor cooking lesson, Ravana Hotel really encourages guests to immerse themselves in both Sri Lankan culture and the environment. Last but not least is housekeeping. It might seem insignificant in the face of some of the other criteria, but it's an essential part of the sustainable story. All guest toiletries at Ravana were provided in reusable, refillable containers. Even the toothpaste was provided, which was in keeping with the hotel's zero tolerance to plastic. Although I wasn't able to get the toiletries brand name or where they sourced it from. Unless requested by guests, towels were not changed, which saved water and energy, but that's a standard we now see across hotels. The cleaning products used were Amami, which are locally sourced, sustainably produced, eco-friendly and ISO certified. Sustainability is not a destination, but an ever-evolving journey. So here are just a few ideas for this sustainable hotel to become even better. I'd love to see this eco-hotel engage the local community and other stakeholders in their regular beach cleanups rather than tackle them alone. I'd love to see a guest orientation with a focus on the incredible wildlife residents as well as get the team to begin conducting their own biodiversity counts. I'd love to see a natural swimming pool without the use of chemicals but instead look into more alternative natural methods like aquatic plants. I'd love to see the team using an easy tracking tool which measures the hotel's waste and energy usage. Tools like Weaver are great for this. I'd also like to see an animal welfare policy in place and guests are encouraged to visit only ethical wild encounters with a special focus on Bundala rather than the overcrowded Yala National Park. And finally, I would love to see local artwork or traditional crafts showcased around the hotel creating more opportunities for local people and it would look great too. With so many of us looking to travel in a more sustainable way but not really sure about how to go about it, I hope these videos help make it easier. Whether you're a family looking to book your next trip or an eco-conscious travel agent, 
I'm passionate about shining a light on the places that are leading the way in sustainable and regenerative travel. Places just like Ravana Garden in Sri Lanka who are proof that travel can be a force for good. The cool thing is we all have the power to drive change within the travel industry. Yes, even you, by simply choosing to vote with your wallet every time you travel and engage in an experience. So my question is, who gets your vote?